Greetings from India Medical Association. And uh, the new team IMA has taken over a week back. And I introduce to you my national president. I am Dr. K.K. Agarwal and you honorary secretary general. And our national president is uh, leading the Team India concept. IMA has 1700 branches. Only yesterday, officially, Telangana branch has been born. So they, it took time to clear it. We signed it yesterday in Telangana branch. And now we have 30 state branches. And we have 2.5 membership. 2.5 doctors? Doctors membership. And we connect to around 4 lakh doctors every day through various resources, connection. So we reach 4 lakh doctors. 2.5 lakh doctors are our paid members. The rest of them are connected. We connect it to them. And we have a uh, 1 lakh medical students who are under our forum, which is extra. Which is extra. <coughs> our national president is a neurosurgeon. He is a Padmashri awardee and he is a very respectable uh, national figure in our country. And uh, because we have taken over only a week back, specifically I have called him here for interacting with all of you. Uh, welcoming you all for this press conference and I thank you for coming for this. And uh, very happy and prosperous new year to all of you. IMA, as you know, is the largest uh, association of doctors all over the world. We are, this number of doctors, no other medical association has. So we are very strong. We have uh, about so 15,000 odd <coughs> branches all over India and we have 2.5 lakhs doctors in our fold. Although the total doctor community number will be around 5 lakhs, the, uh, the good number is uh, is our members of Indian Medical Association. And uh, we have our own views on uh, on health and health policy. And uh, to tell you about an overview of the health scenario in our country, uh, I must say that uh, we are not very happy with uh, our own performance and the health sector performance. Because if you take even agriculture, we are self-sufficient in agriculture. We are producing enough food to feed all the mouths. The distribution system may be faulty. And uh, IT sector, we are far ahead. Uh, and uh, space technology, we are far, far ahead. Economically also, our performance is very good. But health sector, we have areas of achievements, but uh, uniformly, I must say that uh, we have not been able to provide the type of health care that we should do as a big nation. Uh, there are areas of excellences, but there are areas where there is no reach at all. At least in some remote villages, uh, our own citizens are born and die without seeing a doctor or even a uh, health worker. They are born at home. When they are illness, they don't have access to health care. And they, even when they die, they don't get the... So that stage definitely has to change. It could be the fault of the administration, but it also is our fault as uh, health professionals. They, to lead this area is our responsibility. Our social responsibility we may have failed, at least to some extent. Of course, uh, we have been time and again intervening as far as the health policy is concerned. But uh, our voice is not so far heard well, that's what I think. So we are here to, again, assert ourselves to see that the public health is delivered the way it should be. And we request your cooperation to project our views. Of course, our views we definitely you can debate, but ultimately we can convince you that what we stand is for public health more than anything else. So that is my ardent request to you to support our views if you agree on that and see that the situation changes. This high tech that it should change. Uh, well, we don't have uh, what has happened in Bilaspur. A camp where uh, 130 people die is not a uh, light thing. 
It has to be taken very seriously by any person with a consciousness. And uh, here again, government attempt is immediately to <coughs> find a scapegoat in a doctor. A doctor who has been over enthusiastic in doing uh, this uh, procedure. <coughs> but the, uh, uh, the key factor or the fault is not addressed. And no corrective steps is being taken. Because a standard protocol has to be followed. When a camp is to be done, what are the minimum things that should be there? So if these are not uh, followed, such pitfalls can again and again happen. So we had to address to the real problem rather than finding a scapegoat in a doctor who is a little over enthusiastic. So such similar examples, hundreds are there. So that is uh, basically what I feel our uh, health uh, delivery system has to change. We have come out with a three-tier system. You have primary health center, district hospital, and uh, uh, and medical colleges and all. But that system is not followed. Now any person can approach any consultant and seek medical help. So what happens? Uh, the consultants or the uh, central of excellence areas are the over works. So much so, quality work they are not able to do. A headache or an abnormal pain, which a general practitioner can sort out and solve, he comes to a gastroenterologist or a neurologist. And his precious time in handling very serious cases are lost. So a re-establishment of a three-tier system <laughs> has to be there. What is the role of a general practitioner? It has never been <coughs> defined in the health policy. So much so, a MBBS doctor don't feel confident to go to a rural area and do a practice of his own, a practice of a family physician. Because the government uh, doesn't uh, define what the role of a family physician or a uh, MBBS doctor. So these are the gross uh, deficiencies in our health policy. But we are uh, glad that the government is going to have a new health policy. It, it is in the public domain and we are definitely working on it and uh, we will be coming out with our own suggestions within a 30 days or so. So there we are working. Another area is uh, when the 60% of healthcare is handled by the private sector, in the health policy uh, there is no <coughs> inclusion of the the private sector, it is uh, delivering 60% of the health care. Uh, today we had a meeting with the government on uh, the TB control program. So uh, the government or even the officials, uh, the policy is that uh, the, even the private sector, we should have uh, centers to use free drugs for TB control and to supervise it. But the enthusiasm of the government sector or the TB, district TB officer to implement it or to complement IMS effort is not there. That is because the policy is not defined. What is the role of the private sector? How the resources, underutilized resources, unutilized resources in the private, it is abundantly there. Even the best of the hospital in the private sector, we find that there is still say 30% or 40% underutilized or unutilized resources are there both in terms of uh, manpower and equipment and laboratory facilities. This can definitely be harnessed by the government. It is not uh, defined in the health policy. So, role of the family physician is not defined. The role of the private sector, which is a dominant sector in healthcare delivery in our country, is not defined. So, unless these are defined and their place is uh, emphasized, uh, we will still be groping in the darkness. Government is only able to spend 20% of the expenditure. 80% of the expenditure is off the pocket expenditure by each individual. Uh, what the government could do these, all these years? We are saying that uh, now only 1.5% of the GDP was, is spent on health. We are saying that at least 8% should be spent. 
this eight percent uh, sort of generation need not be directly by the government, but this eight percent government can do by utilizing the resources in the private sector, <laughs> and also uh, uh, charging some sets on, uh, say, vehicle tax, alcohol, tobacco. A health sets has to be charged. So. Uh, resource mobilization is not very difficult. Government is planning to have a great role for the uh, health insurance sector, which we feel is not in the correct direction. Because the United States have a system where it is entirely private sector monitored. And uh, the insurance sector is the one which is delivering the health care in that country. Even there, despite of the resources and economic power they have, forty percent of the people the health is either health care is either delayed or denied, <coughs> even in that country. Just because it is all driven by the private uh, the uh, health insurance sector. But we should have a combination of strong government support plus uh, adequate and effective utilization of the private sector. And that's what we are demanding. Uh, private sector, how you utilize? It's not a uh, great thing or a difficult thing. You can have a system of empanelment where you fix a rate for each procedure. And uh, let the private hospital to a citizen who can afford charge at the level they are doing now. But to uh, give the facility to the public and the poor, let the government and the private sector sit together and uh, fix a uh, rate, which will be affordable to the government and also the private institution. So a system of empanelment by which you fix a rate and the underutilized and unutilized resources in the private sector can be tapped. So much so, health care can be made much more affordable to the public. Now 80% they are selling out from their pocket. and. Uh, Every year, the statistics show that 4% of our population is pushed down the poverty line just because of expenditure on health. It is not a small thing. And uh, generally, when you look at it, 40% of the people spent more than what they earn annually or per month on health alone. So what is the money left for uh, housing, food, education, and things like that? So that's a scenario, if you look at it, in terms of affordability, uh, it is horrifying. There are solutions. Uh, if you sit down and think and uh, come out, we can uh, definitely have the government to come out with a solution in the lines that I'm telling you now. Utilizing the resources in the private sector, defining their role, even uh, national disease control programs, uh, even though IMA is voluntary, uh, IMA's uh, resources and manpower and uh, organization capacity is not uh, uh, utilized uh, properly by the government. It can be used, it can be tapped. Uh, because we are the leaders of the <coughs> profession. And uh, uh, over the years we have studied these problems and uh, we know better what is the need, what the society wants and we can give suggestions. Medical education, again, if you look at it, we have a syllabi, the whole syllabi and curriculum, if you look at it, it was formulated in 1997. After that, there's not been a complete revision of the curriculum or syllabi for the medical students. So a medical student who is entering the medical colleges today, when he comes out, he is learning a syllabi and curriculum which is 22 years old. And how is he going to address the present-day diseases, the present-day problems, and what is the motivation and orientation a medical student is given to serve in a peripheral area or rural area? These processes are not incorporated in the medical education process. <coughs> so complete revamping of the medical education to equip him to serve the rural society with motivation has to be there in the medical curriculum. And uh, we are there to give suggestions because uh, uh, IMA is a body where right from a general practitioner to 
uh, even director of medical education or even uh, vice chancellor, all our members. So we have enough and more of uh, resources with us. And we have a think tank, uh, which can definitely give us a lot of But only thing is the government has to give proper uh, importance to what I may say. Many a time, the laws are made in the health sector without consulting IMA. And uh, after it comes, then we have to struggle and we have to protest ourselves, we have to show our visibility to prevent certain things we strongly believe is not best for the, uh, the health of the public. Even the Clinical Establishment Act which has come, uh, uh, the one provision in the Act is at the district level, three persons decide which are the hospitals should be registered. And among that, one is a police officer. What is the role of a police officer in deciding whether a hospital should be registered or not? Uh, we cannot uh, just find out a, a, a good reason for including them. So there is some uh, uh, rules and regulations of form. And uh, this Clinical Establishment Act, one purpose of the Act is to have a uh, minimum standard in health. But uh, the rules and bylaws that are incorporated in the Act is only going to sort of re-establish the license charge and not promote a uniform standard. This you can do only by a system of accreditation process and not through these sort of regulations. IMA is for uniform standards. IMA wants a minimum healthcare standard is uh, uh, retained and maintained and uh, every citizen gets that. And uh, the solution is not the way the Clinical Establishment Act has been framed now. We have suggested changes to convert it into an accreditation body uh, with input from IMA and other professional groups so that uh, by a process of encouragement and incentive, it can be done. A hospital uh, which is to be overnight converted into an institution where the minimum standards are to be maintained, lot of investment, lot of manpower has to come in. There is no clause which promotes these things in the Clinical Assertion Act. There has to be a promotional clause, say some funding or loan or something like that, so that this can be done. Without that, uh, if you say that uh, it has to be done and a police officer is put in the committee to enforce it, to threaten the doctor to have, by threatening do you think a minimum standard can be achieved? So such uh, thoughtless clauses are there the, in many of the bills that come. So we have given our suggestions. <laughs> But uh, we need your help to see that uh, uh, things are put in the right perspective and uh, things do happen. Another major objection we have is on mixopathy. Bridge courses between different systems of medicine. Uh, and uh, we don't know how far it is going to encourage or facilitate or improve healthcare delivery. Each system works on a different principle. Homeopathy says that when you go on diluting, its efficiency increases. Modern medicine says that when you go on diluting, its efficiency decreases. We say that uh, uh, some of the disease processes are due to infection. Homeopathy says that uh, there is no infection. It is all uh, changes in the body constitution and uh, things. So the contradictory principles are there. Of course, each system has its own usefulness in certain areas it can be used. But you define where each system can be useful. We are not uh, against promoting other systems because we don't know what other systems have. But uh, let government promote it. Let, do, uh, let them come up. But it's not by mixing it. Not by allowing a homeopath to write modern medical drugs. Not by allowing an Ayurveda doctor to write modern medical drugs. Let those systems develop, do research and grow and serve the uh, health needs of the community. It has all, all these systems has its own importance. We don't deny it. <coughs> but let them develop in their own system. Let government give encouragement to develop them in their own area. But uh, mixing of different systems, uh, allowing uh, modern medical doctors to practice Ayurveda or Ayurveda doctors to prescribe modern medicine, we are 10% against it. It is going to be very dangerous. 
even modern medical doctors in spite of all this training in spite of specialization in spite of uh, having so many cme program still <coughs> i cannot say that uh, we are fully competent to drug uh, right drugs for every disease but uh, we are still in a learning process how can a person of a different system by a crash course of exposure for i say 2 months or even 6 months become competent to prescribe those medicines and write those medicines that is going to be dangerous and it is going to cost lives so we strongly believe that mixing of systems should not be there but every system has its own scope and limitations let each system grow in their own perspective and so the health needs of our society there we are very 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 now the present government has a tendency to promote ayush we are not against promoting ayush let ayush uh, go in its own way but don't mix it with modern medicine let modern medicine go in its own way let ayush grow in its own way but don't mix different systems and produce more cracks we already have more a uh, lot of cracks let us not systematically or with government support produce more quacks it is going to be very very dangerous to our healthcare delivery system then uh, there is a deterioration in the uh, doctor patient relationship public uh, uh, view point of doctors uh, for very various reasons as uh, not the way we want and we expect but here again we are very conscious about that to address those problems ima is going to have a ethics committee and a grievance cell so that uh, any doctor or any uh, citizen can give a complaint to ima we will be periodically sitting at least once in 3 months at the national level and uh, uh, state level and district level and we will try to address these problems and uh, find a solution and uh, we are not uh, here to say that uh, our own doctors who do wrong things uh, if they do wrong things we still take it very seriously and the ethics committee's job is to go into those areas and the grievance cell lot of the doctor patient uh, uh, relationship worsening is uh, mainly because of misunderstanding so to a large extent we can correct the misunderstanding through the grievance cell and also if you really feel that uh, something has gone wrong on the side of the doctor we don't hesitate to take proper action in those areas also because this has to improve doctor patient relationship has to improve so that again we will be addressing and uh, IMA's intervention in uh, disease control and uh, things like that. We have our own uh, agenda on that. Uh, various areas, right from uh, sound pollution to uh, sort of our habit-related diseases and other infect newer infections that are coming in. Uh, then uh, psychiatric illnesses and uh, addictions. All these things through a process is already happening in ima we will be strengthening those uh, areas where we can do uh, many a time the government excuse for mixopathy is that modern medical doctors are not available in the periphery this as i already mentioned one solution is let government define the what is the role of a uh, family physician or mbbs doctor then he will be much more uh, interested Uh, to go to the periphery and start a practice second is uh, uh, second thing is that at least uh, 14% of the primary health centers there is no doctor ima is ready to you those doctors in those centers because ima members who are doing prayer practice in these areas definitely can be utilized ima will be facilitating agents to see that these private doctors on a uh, contract basis they work in areas where doctors are not able that responsibility ima is ready to take up and uh, but we don't want mixopathy 
just trading quacks uh, uh, to serve in the rural area because uh, rural Indians, they are not less than animals. Even for treating animals, we have a veterinary doctor who undergoes five years of training, proper training. Just because a person is born in a rural area, he should not be uh, allowed to be treated by quacks or by people who are trained for three years or things like that. That we strongly object. These crash courses to produce more doctors, we are again objecting there. So this is our perspective and uh, I, Leonard, Secretary General, whom you are very familiar, he has been a, all along a strong health activist, he is vocal in the media and uh, I am fortunate that uh, I have a very strong person as my lieutenant. We will together see that some change do occur in the health scenario and now Thank you. Uh, it is for him. Thank you, Dr. Delight. In India, why gold's ghost has to be sifted again and again for health for all? How much blame should be apportioned to you? As you said, you are also guilty for that. And how much blame should be put on the door of the government? Yeah. Since he said that only national issues of national importance should be discussed, mm. that is why this. Yeah. See, uh, if you look at the role of the medical associations internationally, whether British Medical Association or American Medical Association, before a health policy or a bill or law comes, the medical association is taken seriously. Their viewpoint is given enough importance. So, lot of modifications in the bill do come. So, this process never happens in our country, unfortunately. We try to know uh, existing rules and regulations and all, but uh, it is not uh, through a direct process. And uh, our views are the, not even uh, important, it should be given. Because uh, the spectrum of Indian Medical Association is that right from a general practitioner to the top administrators and the best of the specialists are all members of Indian Medical That is our advantage and that is our strength. Uh, is that the Niti Aayog has been, you know, contributed into the planning commission. So, will it make any difference for the health sector? Because you are not happy with the performance of the health sector so far. So, the, what is your comment on this Niti Aayog? So, planning commission has been Planning commission has been renamed as Niti Always, always, always. The, the renaming is not going to make much difference. But the process is, take, uh, let the government take IMA seriously. Uh, let them give importance to our views. Well, we have the uh, brain power and think tank to suggest uh, changes and reforms. Sir, why the IMA is not being taken like, seriously by the government of India? No, let me tell yeah. you. Uh, Mainly for political reasons. No, you I are a very strong one. No, 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 yeah. no uh, uh, I, I will uh, tell you. See, the BRHC course that was a few years ago, the government almost, Gulam uh, Nadi Asad period, we had objected to it strongly. And uh, government did go ahead with that, with, with that, pressing our objection. Then we had to, uh, the practicing doctors had to come to Delhi, and uh, one day we had to protest. So our protest and visibility, then the government heeded. And so, that BRC course is now in the cold storage. But then uh, they are trying to revive it uh, other ways by starting bridge courses and things like that. But what is your no, views about I, this? No, no, what, I, what I'll answer you is, ki abhi tak, till today the government, we cannot comment, comment today's scenario with the previous governments. Okay, the previous government was they were taking decisions and policies without involving doctors. They used to have individual doctors as their advisors. They will call their own people who are treating them, call them and decide whatever they wanted. In our installation, Nataji Jain, in Gujarat, and he said only one word. He said, IMA is indispensable. IMA means the medical professional's collective consciousness. And he says, as far as the current government is concerned, we will work together. That means 
and that's the reason they have given us the policy which has come, they given two months. Yesterday there was a meeting on rural doctors retention and 40% presentation we presented. There was a discussion on generic medicines, we had a voice to, and they respected our voice. I personally feel let's not compare ourselves with the last couple of decades because things are different today. And I think we are going to work together. And medical profession, IMA is committed for the welfare of the medical profession. And I don't think so government will oppose because they are involving us practically in every meeting. For example, in Jan Oshidi scheme, the government is asking doctors to write generic. Okay. All of you, all of you have been, why don't you write generic, why don't you write generic, why don't you write generic. And IMA had, with the permission of the president, I presented, I present, represented the IMA. And we had a very strong discussion there. And our strong discussion was, I said, why do you want to force us to write a generic drug? Because if you force us to write a generic drug, what will happen? The chemist will be free to use whatever company he wants. He will only use his margins. It will not, the benefit will not go to the patient. So what was the conclusion was, now the government has a bureau called BPPI. The job of a bureau is to find out, first of all, come out with a quality control. So they say we will ensure quality control of drugs which are procured from various pharmaceutical companies, not necessarily government pharmaceutical companies whose rate will be decided by the government, whose quality will be decided by the government. They may belong to Renbaxi, they may belong to Zyda, they may belong to a multinational company. And these drugs will be available in every chemist under the brand of, under the name in the bracket of BPPI or, or Jan Oshdi, and which will be affordable and of quality. And IMA said, why not? Why not? Because once these drugs are available, I don't have to go now <coughs> to the website and find out which one is cheaper, which one is costlier. And, 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 and if government can make us available cheaper and affordable drugs, there is no reason why doctors should not write about them for people who can't afford them. Health Ministry has <coughs> guidelines for doctors to write the generic spelling clear and write it in big so, is there any initiative in IIA that you say that all doctors say that they say that they are doing it, they are doing it, they are doing it, we are doing it and KK is very much, his obsession is that. The words of the name of capital words are written in the capital words. The capital words are written in the capital words, the capital words are written in the capital words. If someone does it, it is a different thing. लेकिन एमआईएमए और एमसीआई का स्टैंड बड़ा क्लियर है पिछली प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस में मैंने आपको एक एग्जांपल दिया था लेवर्टा और केवर्टा का लेवर्टा इज लिवोसेट्राजीन जो कि जुकाम में दी जाती है एंड केवर्टा इज वियाग्रा एक आदमी को लिखा था लेवर्टा और उसने खाली केवर्टा यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड स्पेलिंग गलत होगी तो क्या होगा यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड स्पेलिंग गलत होगी तो क्या होगा और ये एक एग्जाम्पल दे रहा हूँ ऐसे रोज होते हैं इसलिए स्पेलिंग को अगर कोई भी डॉक्टर आपको मिलता है जो दवाई के स्पेलिंग को बोल्ड लेटर में कैपिटल लेटर में नहीं दिख रहा तो आप उसमें ऑब्जेक्शन उठा सकते हैं सर पनिशमेंट पनिशमेंट इज इफ इज ए कंप्लेन इन मेडिकल काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया एन इफ इज राइटिंग देर इज नो हार्म वार्निंग इफ देर इज ए वॉर इफ देर इज ए हार्म टू द पेशेंट इट एन टाइटल टू एन एक्शन Action will depend upon where he goes. If he goes to the Consumer Protection Act, then he gets a compensation. If he comes to us, we issue a warning. If he doesn't improve, suspension for some time. So this is Richa from Kanye's Sir, my question is, what are the steps being taken uh, to prevent public from Ebola? Okay. What are the plans and precautions? Okay, <coughs> Ebola IMA has a project. IMA has come out with the guideline. We have already had two uh, webinars on Ebola. And at the moment, Ebola is not a national threat. And IMA members of two lakh doctors are being trained to be prepared for Ebola. Next. Sir, we have to take care of the people who are trained to be prepared for Ebola. And the Delhi Police Commissioner says that the Vishra Jaj will be sent to the Vishra Jaj. We have already issued guidelines, we have already written to the Prime Minister and to the Health Minister that it is very pathetic 
कि आपको सुनंदा पुष्कर के केस में विसरा सैंपल के लिए बाहर भेजा जा रहा है अगर इस केस के अंदर में ऐसा हो रहा है तो लाखों की तादाद में मर्डर सुसाइड की तरह घोषित किए जा रहे होंगे एंड वी आवास फॉर ए फॉरेंसिक लैब स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट इन एवरी डिस्ट्रिक्ट फॉर पुअर पर्सन बीपीएल एंड ईडब्ल्यू कैटेगरी हम रिजर्वेशन इज डन इन प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल दे डू दी कंसल्टेशन एंड दिस ट्रीटमेंट दे प्रेस्क्राइब बट मेडिसिन आर नॉट अवेलेबल टू देम वट इज योर व्यू लाइक सम कैंसर पेशेंट्स दे गो टू बत्रा अंडर ई डब्ल्यू एस और बी पी एल एंड दे डोंट हैव दी मेडिसिन वट इज द यूज ऑफ गोइंग टू सच हॉस्पिटल अनफॉर्चुनेटली If you are a bona fide resident of Delhi for last three years, and your family income is less than three lakhs, you are entitled for a five lakh medical treatment in a year and year and year and year. Hundred crores of rupees, Delhi Delhi government has under that Arogya Nidhi scheme, which is a fixed deposit, and ten crores are available for disbursement. And I went through the site the last five years. Not more than 25, 50 lakhs have been disbursed because people are not availing it. People are not aware about it. People don't know where to go and how to go. So the money is available. So when you say poor people, poor people, uh, in the last three months, I got six people got money from that. I, 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 I am helping them in applying for that. So the money is available. Money is not a shortage. People don't know how to apply, where to go. Yeah, there needs uh, some publicity. Huh. Regarding your hospital, which I've got a free land, hmm. is their duty. Fight yeah. for them. If they anybody fights, he gets it. No, listen to me. If anybody fights, he gets. Every is everybody's job is to in some way to help you. But if you fight for your right, you get it. How the poor can go and fight? Why not? That's what our job they, is. They will, they That's they what IMS. But Batra is sending the people listen to AIMS. Listen, listen, uh, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. IMS. One of the slogans for IMS is this year is "Jiska koi nahi, uska IMS." Please approach us. I will send you the list. Don't forget you. Our marriage bill is a toll free number. After you. नहीं मेरे सारे टॉल फ्री नंबर आप लोग क्या बैठे हो आप मेरे टॉल फ्री नंबर नो आई 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 रिप्रेजेंट माय नेशनल प्रेसिडेंट आप हमारे टॉल फ्री नंबर हो भेजो पेशेंट्स को ओके कैन डू दैट सर डेफिनेटली वी कैन डू दैट सर थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर आई वांट टू हैव एनी फ्रेंड्स आई हैव टू हैव एनी फ्रेंड्स